Welcome back to Lid. Hope you made your cup of tea during the break. Now would not be a good time to disappear. The grid looks like this for the Junior Minimoto Rookie class. The only rider missing off that caption is Hayden Whiteman. He goes off P11. We've got Alexander Merchant, Saffron Watley and Eleanor Knight joining us at this round. They miss round one. Great to have you with us, though, guys. And the early leader is Leo Peacock. We're on board with the helicam. What a fantastic shot, Jake. It is indeed. Peacock under pressure from uh, Ryan Hitchcock early on then in this race as they power their way through the chicane for the first time. Ellen the Knight just trying to hold off the attention of Alexander Merchant at the back there in front of Hayden Whiteman. Here is the 34 of Ryan Hitchcock swarming around all over the back of Leo Peacock and just behind them in tow. That is the 48 of Ollie Walker trying to close in as well. Great little tussle here between these three. Yep. Walker looks like he's got a new suit on this weekend for Ollie Walker. I'm sure he had a red suit on last time, but uh, nice new black and yellow suit. It's a battle for the lead. Very close indeed to Hitchcock off the turn there through the Riverside Loop, and they're almost three wide Hitchcock on the run to the infield. Inside. Has he got him? Oh, yes, he has. That Got was nice so move. close. They almost tangled. Very nicely done. And up to third position. That looks to me like Sean Abel's made the move for third place. He has. Winner last time. Ryan Hitchcock, of course, put it on pole last time in the televised race. Oh, more problems for Walker. That looks to me as though the 93 of Emmanuel Brinton's just moved up. The six-year-old from Brighton. He's moved himself up into fourth position. So tumbling down the timesheets then is fifth place man Walker. So Hitchcock's got the lead, pole man last time, broke down, you may remember Jake in the televised race, just four corners into the race, Mason Johnson had the lead through turn two and crashed, but uh, Ryan Hitchcock who had pole, unfortunately, he he uh, stopped about four corners in. Well there's Sean Abel, the 3-3-0, the eight-year-old from Westbury, trying to close down on these two once again, very close under breaking as Ryan Hitchcock, the leader just holds off the attentions of Leo Peacock on the 36, they are so close to go, oh that's Hayden Whiteman, Looks like some slight issues there for the 82. Well, it's, it's his first time on the track, and uh, I think that's what we're looking at there. Just not, not as confident as everyone else, but it's about enjoying it. You've got to enjoy your weekend on the track. doesn't matter about pace today. He's just getting used to the bike. Defensive lines here from your Oh, a little bit of a tangle there as Peacock tried to have a go there at... Uh, Right and Hitchcock, he just didn't quite have the line sewn up. He was being very defensive and he got caught off guard there. Peacock almost went down. Now he's got Abel and uh, I think that's Walker back into fourth position again. So he's obviously dealt with Brinton and moved ahead. Now he's on the prowl once again to try and move on to third position to get past Sean Abel. Great little battle here. That is Ollie Walker, seven-year-old for Western Supermare, fourth place at the moment. So... Uh... You see, in that picture, he had the red suit on. New suit this weekend for Ollie. Nice. Yes, indeed. And I think into sixth position now, that is Mason Johnson who's got himself back into contention here. So any one of these six riders could still get the victory here. Johnson's pace very rapid on the back of Brinton on the 93. Obviously a famous number in motorcycle racing now, used by the great Mark Marquez, who's uh, still very much uh, the man to beat in motorcycle racing. Come 10, 15 years down the line, could well be one of these guys we're talking about on the MotoGP stage. And again to the chicane round through the riverside loop beautiful scenes here from the helicam as we have once again walker challenging abel into third position wasn't quite able to see who managed to get the run but peacock again challenging hitchcock into the hairpin at the infield all oh, very close indeed they're coming up to whiteman they lap him nicely there but this battle between these two, very close indeed. And Peacock, oh, oh and down! down. Whiteman oh. down as Emmanuel Brinton went by. And similar to the incident earlier on in the previous race, yeah. the pro race, Oscar Pinson going by the back marker. We've got a similar sort of thing here. Just catches him yep. with his rear end. You can't really apportion blame there. It's just a racing incident. Unfortunate for Hayden Whiteman, particularly as it's his first day on the track. You don't really want to see that, but listen, it's his first off, it won't be his last as we see Peacock having a go at Hitchcock but can't quite get it done. Yes indeed, bit of a baptism of fire for Whiteman but even Mark Marquez goes down in MotoGP, he even did it the other day. So uh, you've got to learn by mistakes and that's how you become a world champion. Great little battle this at the front as once again Hitchcock holding off the attentions of Peacock. Peacock seeming to get very close under braking but watch as they come through the Riverside Loop. This is a fantastic shot from the helicam. Look at that, you see the uh, river flowing by. That's why we call this it's a Riverside like Loop. almost like a mini Sipang, isn't it? Yeah. Absolutely fantastic. <laughs> once again we watch the uh, 178 Saffron Watley going by as Merchant has now got himself on terms with Eleanor Knight trying to make the pass 
both of those riders as well. In fact, all of the three we've just mentioned, this is their first day with us. Welcome, guys. First of many, hopefully. Absolutely, and a fantastic battle between them as well. Not only are they on their first ever ride in a professional British championship, they're having a great race of it as well. Yeah, and that, that race is important. Let me explain why. You might think, well, they're at the back of the field. We have a look at Mason Johnson's information there. Well, at the back of the field, why does it matter? I'll tell you why. Because today they're at the back of the field, but next season they may be at the front of the field battling for first and second, and that's the race and that's the day you want to win because it wins you a trophy. Absolutely, and all that hard work in the previous year is invaluable. You learn how to deal with racecraft, you learn how to deal with adversity. It's always about, I always say, the best motorsport athletes, whether they be on bikes or on cars, you can always tell a great champion by not what they do when they win, but what they do when they are not winning. A fantastic opportunity here on the inside. Nicely handled there from Peacock. Gets Hitchcock on the switchback through the Riverside loop. And here comes Ollie Walker round the outside. He could get second place here if he nails the breaking point perfectly. He's going to have to go the long way round. Maybe he can get the undercut switchback. He's got to do it again on the other side. He's not going to get that one. But round the outside comes what Hitchcock. Move. What a move by Hitchcock. <laughs> Takes the lead back. Absolutely sensational. And these three now have managed to give Sean Abel a second chance here. He's watching these three scrap and gone, right, boys, time to roll the sleeves up. Let's get on it. An absolutely brilliant battle. Four-way scrap for the lead here at lead. Magic. This isn't like the earlier pro race. This is a real battle. The four of them come through the McLaren chicane one more time. It's, so it's Hitchcock that's got the lead back from Peacock. They sweep past the helicam down Lakeside into the Lakeside chicane. The four leaders, what a race this is. And they're going to come up on some traffic as well. So that's going to make the battle very dynamic indeed. They get past Knight, no problem. The two leaders, Hitchcock in front of Peacock. Great little battle between these two. And they've actually opened up the gap a little bit back to Walker and Abel. So they're going to continue scrapping for third position. And they'll try their best to close back in. But Sean Abel and Ollie Walker struggling a little bit to run with the pack now. As again, the leaders, I think that's Hitchcock. They've been bought by Alexander Merchant. And there goes Peacock, oh, he's through. Peacock's taken advantage. You've got to take advantage of the back markers. It's how you deal with the back markers. And here comes, here comes Abel dancing up the inside. He might be able to get into the top two here. He almost managed to get them both on the fly there. Um, Hitchcock and uh, Ollie Walker. He almost managed to get both of them. Ollie Walker, look at the aggression in the yeah. line around the outside. He is determined. He wants to get the win here. And he's looking very, very sharp now. He seems to have, this battle seems to have woken him up and given him a bit of an energy shot. Fantastic shot that as he goes round there. That is the way to ride these bikes around the corner. Somebody like uh, Karis Jones, for example, in the earlier race, she can learn a lot from watching that. As we saw Karis go through that corner, she was lifting a knee up. But uh, just have a look at that one little clip there as Peacock looks up the inside, can't get it done. That one little clip there of watching uh, Ollie Walker going through that turn, kept his knee planted on the ground, the throttle planted. That is a way to get round the corner as quick as you possibly can. And that's the sort of thing that the younger riders can learn watching this footage. Well, just slapping Cameron Sewell on the 100, the seven-year-old. And while these four continue to battle, Mason Johnson's now up to fifth position. He's got past Brinton again and is now charging after these guys and is actually bringing Brinton with him. So we may even get a six-way scrap of victory this way. Walker, outside. very fast indeed on the outside line. We're into the last lap. Hitchcock, Peacock, Walker, an absolute three-man tussle and a mighty scrap for victory around the lid circuit. And again, look at how aggressive Walker is through the line on the infield section. This man wants to win and he's got a tall order to do it from third place. Here they go again. Oh, oh back no! Again. Back marker may have won Leo Peacock the race there again. I said before, it's how you deal with the traffic. Let's have a look at the replay here. This is so through close. Paddock on the last lap then. Peacock takes advantage and sweeps by, but look at Hitchcock, he gets balked and Walker tries to come round the outside, but he seems to have to get on the brakes as well. Fastest lap set by Ryan Hitchcock, and he's he's hunting Peacock down, still on this last lap. He's not done yet, here he goes on the inside line, he's going to have a look, oh, just a little bit too eager into the horseshoe, but he's got an opportunity up the straight towards the Riverside Loop. He's going to have to nail the Riverside Loop perfectly here, he comes sweeping into the outside line, he's overcooked it a little. Inside. 
It's going to be a drag race to the line this on board with the Helicam all the way to the finish line. He's got a good line out of the final turn. He could get the there. He's going to go for it. He's going to go for it. Keep the throttle in. Come on, come on, come on. Get there. No, oh, he goes. Yes, nine hundredths, nine hundredths of a second oh, off the line. Leo Peacock, Peacock takes it. Just gets the win there. Hitchcock will have to fight another day. Absolutely brilliant win from Leo Peacock. Hitchcock in second position. Walker third from Sean Abel and Mason Johnson. Absolutely fantastic. Fantastic race and look at what it does in the points championship. Leo Peacock now nine points clear of Sean Abel with Ollie Walker a further eight back. This championship just got red hot. Now in Moto Team, 10 riders would make up the grid. Ian Jackson goes off T2. He dominated at the first round. It was Sam Clowes off pole, but the greatest Moto Team in the world, Fifi Le Ding Dong, would split them through turns one and two. So it was Klaus for SFC Racing from Trevor Fife, Fifi Le Ding Dong, and then Ian Jackson for Devil Racing. Now later around that first lap, it was still as you were, but this race would unfortunately be marred by a huge incident involving the race leader going through there, Sam Klaus, and the back marker, Time Bomb Racing, that bike ridden by John Hosker. Let's have a look. Now coming through turns one and two the start of lap six the leader goes past Hosker and unfortunately as he's going past just happens to clip him now John's a big lad and he goes down like the proverbial ton of bricks we'll have a look at the head-on camera now here's Sam he just clips John watch the marshal here John has not even stopped rolling and the marshal's already got the yellow flag out that is world-class marshalling right there Without marshals, we can't go racing. That was brilliant. Now, the motorcyclist handbook tells you what to do following a pal's accident. Well, your pal's down, run speedily to where the accident has occurred. Do you check out your mate? No, you check the bike is okay first. Cursory look back at your pal. Is he okay? He's unconscious. But let's not worry about that. Let's check the bike out. Is the bike okay? Seems to be fine. That's okay then. After the race, I caught up with a race winner. Sam, winner in the Moto team, but um, hollow victory, I guess. Just talk us through that incident there at the end. Yeah, it was. Uh, I got a good start and uh, and leading, and uh, bullet pulled out a gap, and I thought, and uh, the back marker was looked behind, and I thought he saw me, uh, and I just got underneath him, and he got panicked and tipped in on me, and uh, and I hope all the best that he's all right. Well, I can confirm after an overnight stay in the hospital, John was released. He was OK and back at the track on the Sunday. Devil Racing leads the championship from SFC and no name racing. None of that important, though. The fact that John Hosker's OK is...